Hello and welcome to yet another episode of me reacting to fan-made cards I found on the internet. And in this episode, I wanted to finish off a series of cards that I started off uh, in episode 8. Um, those were 21 cards made by a creator called Star Trek 238. And I went through the first 10 cards in episode 8 and the next 11 so that we complete the 21 he created in that series. I will want to go through today and then I have one additional card from another creator that I'll mention when we get there. But let's start off with uh, world government bonds. And I think this is a really good idea, uh, this card, because it basically completes a series of cards, uh, sponsors, acquired company, and then world government bonds. And it completely makes sense. Um, if you think about it, um, sponsors cost six plus three, uh, so nine um, for two MC pro. Acquired company costs ten plus three, so um, thirteen for uh, three MC pro, and this costs uh, two plus three for one MC pro, so um, five. So it's always a step up or a step down of four MC for one more MC pro. And all of these three cards uh, exactly take five turns to pay back. Of course, if I had the choice in my starting hand, do you want world government bonds, sponsors, or acquired company? I'd probably always take um, acquired company because it's just a more impactful card to play in the early game. But like this is never bad. Uh, if you get this in the starting hand, you probably always keep it. It's a really cheap earth tech. It pays back in five gens. It's fairly priced. It's nothing spectacular, um, but let's say you draw this in whatever gen for free. You can basically nearly always play this because without buying the card, it only costs two MC, so it pays back in two gens. And let's say you even have a discount, then it pay pays back even faster. And the Earth Tech can be really, really helpful for Cartel or Miranda Resort or whatever. So it's not a spectacular card, not game changing or anything, but it makes sense. And I think this would fit right into the game. It's a really good design. And yeah, let's get to the next one because this one is fairly simple. This one, however, is uh, really, really interesting. A terraforming experience costs 15, has no tag which is always kind of underwhelming, but there's a little bit of a combo potential for no tags. And this card, uh, when you raise a parameter, you gain one data resource on this card. And data resources on this card can be used as plants, as either one plant or two heat. So basically, if you increase the temperature or any track eight times, you can basically place a greenery for free. If you say it like that, that doesn't sound great because um, the card costs 15 plus another three to buy, so 18 for a greenery after you've done eight steps. That's not great. But the thing is, um, data resources on this card cannot be stolen. Uh, it's flexible between plants or heat. So you only need four data resources to increase the temperature, for example. You can complete sets of eight plants or eight heat uh, that you have as normal resources with this card. So let's say you have six plants and then you also use two data resources to complete a set of eight and convert. So for that, it's really, really nice. And I think in a terraforming or in a, in a rush strategy, this could pay off if you play it early on. Of course, the more terraforming you've already done, the later it is in the game. Not necessarily the later it is in the game. I mean, if it's gen five and there has been almost no terraforming yet, then this card is even better than in the first gen because you know the terraforming that will happen will happen really quickly and then this card will pay back faster. Um, so I think this is really, really interesting, but I think it's one of those cards that you would need to play with to really, really know if uh, this card is worth it. But a cool concept for sure. And this data resources will uh, pop up a, a few times and has already popped up in episode 8 when I talked about the first 10 cards. It's basically a, a fan-made resource that is used in a lot of fan-made expansions. But uh, Let's get to the next card. Yeah, there, there's the next example. Research Archives. Costs 8, has a science tag, 
And when you play a science tag, you get a data resource on this card, and then each data resource is basically a third of a point. Basically, decomposers, uh, but for science tags. And there you see uh, that it's probably not that strong. Um, the thing with decomposers is it works on three different tags, on plant, animal, and microbe tags. And there are also cards that hold both uh, a plant and a microbe or a plant and an animal or whatever tag, even advanced ecosystem, which holds all three. And there's only one card in the game that holds two science tags, which is research. And I think this is just too weak. Uh, it costs, it even costs more than decomposers. Of course, you can play it in the first gen immediately. You can't do that with decomposers. Um, but after nine science tags, it's only is, uh, three points. I guess if you have this in your starting hand and you have a science payoff like AI Central or AGT on hand, you know that you will go for a long game and you know you will basically play any science tech you find, then this is a good science tech on the way to it. But if you don't really know whether you're going for science or not, and it's kind of mid game or whatever, then I would probably never pick this up. Uh, however, like decomposers is always a threatening card. If you see decomposers in the mid to late game, you don't want to pass that in the draft. It's it's really, really threatening. And uh, research archives, I don't think is. I will put the comparison in the base game between science text and then the three green text on screen. And I believe science text should be way, way less than the other three texts. And, and then you can see that decomposer is probably much, much stronger than this one. But interesting concept. and. Yeah, in, in some other fan-made cards also give you the option to add data resources to other cards, but I think there are better targets than this one. Let's get to the next one. Radiotropic Fungus. This one is interesting. It's another um, global discount. And I think it could also be the most expensive microbe tech in the game that is just a microbe tech. I think there's also like, what's it called, that one... Colonies card, I think. Ecology research. Let me look that up. I'm interested in that one. But that one has like a ton of different texts. Um, yeah, ecology research. That costs 21, but that also has a science, animal, and plant tag. And I think there's no card with just a microbe tag that is as expensive as this one. So basically, it gives you a 1MC discount, same as, for example, um, Research Outpost, grants you a point and one energy production. So let's um, like decipher this or like split it into the equal parts. Let's say the, the point is worth 4MC and this one is worth 7MC, the production. So together, 11MC. And this, this costs nine for a global discount. And I think that's quite cheap. Um, if you compare it to Research Outpost, that one costs 18 and gives you a city, which I think isn't that valuable in the early game, but it can pay you back quite a bit uh, because it's, it's a tile. So you can place it on, on, on plants, on titanium, on steel, on cards. Um, so it's two cheaper, has three tags, one of which is the science tag, which is much more useful than this micro tag. Um, I don't know whether I would like to see this or research outpost in my starting hand. The energy prod, if you have a use for the energy prod, then radiotrophic fungus is, I mean, it's always really good because global discounts are just busted. But if you have a use for the energy prod, it's probably better than a research outpost. Um, but this card is really just a mix of everything. Micro tech, power prod, global discount point. It's, it's wild. And also it costs 20. So with, with credit core, um, you have four MC rebate on it. With Vitor, you got a three MC rebate on it. Interesting card. Um, I, I'm not a fan of adding more global discounts to the game. Uh, I'd rather add like, um, some cards that give uh, discounts to specific tags. 
because then you can cut these tags from your enemy in the draft and have interesting decisions. Do I cut this tag or do I, do I take a card that I think is more beneficial for me? But global discounts are just, you can't play around them, let's say it like that. Um, but let's get to the next one. And before I move on to industrial espionage here, please head down to the description and check out the original Reddit posts um, by Star Trek 238 and also Demzu, which will, uh, which has made it, uh, who has made a card that we will take talk about later. Uh, leave them an upvote because I really appreciate uh, these Reddit creators uh, that always um, do these interesting fan-made cards for me to talk about. But yeah, Industrial Espionage, another card that uses the data resource, costs 5 MC and gives you uh, uh, MC prop. So that already is quite nice. I mean, it's I wouldn't play this without the effect, of course, but uh, it definitely helps that it has an MC prop. And it's basically a budget version of a restricted area. You spend 2 MC to add a data resource to any card. You can add them to this card and then you can spend data resources on this card to draw a card. So it takes double the amount of time um, to draw a card with this than with restricted area. It's comparable to, for example, area mappers, but area mappers is a bit more expensive, but you don't need to spend money and it's floaters instead of data resources so you can work with other floater cards it also has a point and different tags but yeah i would probably keep this in my starting hand it's not a phenomenal card uh, but this one mc prod basically means that um, the two mc that you pay each other gen uh, don't really matter they basically count each other out and you get just get a card every other gen for free which is really, really nice. And if you happen to find a really good data re uh, collecting card, then you can also add these resources on that card. But I think it's it's a fine card. I don't think it's overpowered. Um, there's cheaper card draw, for example, um, Business Network. Uh, there's be definitely better card draw than this. I think this is fine. And also because it has no tag and it doesn't have like insane combo potential. Focus Deployment, another data um, collecting card. This one is uh, Focus Development. I don't know if I said that name right. This one is really, really interesting. Costs 9 MC, uh, has a point on it. And the data on this card can be used as a reduction of uh, science text that are required on cards. Let's say you want to play um, AGT. Uh, you can spend, for example, three science text on this card and then you can play uh, three three data resources on this card. And then you can play AGT at four science tags instead of seven. That's really good. Um, if you have a science payoff that is really strong, and I would say that includes a AI Central, AGT, and Mass Converter. And I wouldn't do it for Quantum. Are there any other cards? I mean, in the expansions, there's also um, Orb Drive, for example, which is insanely strong. Um, but it needs to be a pretty strong science tech, uh, science requirement uh, that I would consider using focus development for it. Um, of course, let's say you want to get AI Central down. Uh, you use focus development for it, get it down. And what do you do with this card afterwards? If you don't draw into another uh, higher science requirement and you don't have a data uh, collecting card, then focus development is practically useless from that point on. You don't need to use the action anymore. You don't need to spend the MC um, to do it. You can just leave the card as is. At least it will give you points and it helped you get AI down. So that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably best if you have multiple cards, with, multiple really strong cards with um, high science requirements on them. Then this card is really strong. And yeah, but it also takes a while to, I mean, for AI to get, let's say to get all three science tags, you would need six gens with this or five gens because you can immediately use it once when you played it. But yeah. Uh, next card is Erosion Reducing Plants. It's the same global requirement as Grass. Costs 
uh, a bit more though, uh, 3MC more, has a plan tag and it trades in the two, uh, trades in two plans for one TR bump. And I think on paper, that's definitely better. Uh, one TR bump is better than two plans. But if those two plans allow you to convert your plans to a greenery and uh, save them from an asteroid, then grass is definitely better than erosion reducing plants. But all in all, I think this is a pretty good uh, mid game plant card. It's much more expensive than Heather, uh, but can be played a bit sooner. It's a bit more expensive than grass, has pros and cons to it, but overall, I would say it's a little bit stronger than uh, grass. And I think it's just a fine card. Uh, the plant tech is always valuable. It immediately gains, uh, grants you one plant, which can be really useful. And I think it's just really, really nice in a rush strategy. So yeah, let's move on to the next one, which is energy import. Another really interesting card. I think this might be the first um, event with a uh, power tech. And we need to give some love to power techs anyways. Uh, it costs 2 MC and gives you 3 energy. Of course, if you draw this for free and you're playing with colonies uh, you don't, and you didn't have really uh, power laying around because you didn't get 3 power prod online, then this is really nice because that means you can just trade one gen for really cheaply. If you don't draw this for free and see it in a draft, I wouldn't prioritize it highly because with buying the card, you're paying 5 MC uh, versus 9 uh, if you just trade with money. And is that 4MC really worth it? If you have Media Group, if you are IC, then definitely. And if the um, colony tracks have moved up quite a bit, uh, then also definitely, let's say, for example, Ceres is at maximum, then you would, of course, pay uh, 3 to buy this card and trade there and get, this, uh, get all the steel. But the thing is, in the draft, you need to think, does the other card give me more than 4MC? Because all the energy import does in the draft for you, if you don't have any combo potential or global discounts, is it grants you 4MC in that case, if you want to trade with it. You can, if Ceres is at maximum, you can just spend 9MC to trade there and you will still make a benefit. So the um, opportunity costs in the draft, you need to think about that. Uh, of course, there are other scenarios where you can't just spend MC as power. For example, uh, if you have an oxygen bumper online and someone uh, stole uh, power production from you at the end of the gen, uh, with like energy tapping or power supply consortium, then you can play energy import and still use the oxygen bumper. But that's that won't happen regularly. That's a rare occasion. And I think you could also live with just not using your oxygen bumper that one gen and try to get some power online again. So this is definitely not a bad card. I think it's it will see a lot of play if you're playing with colonies and it won't see a lot of play if you're not playing with colonies. If you draw this for free and you have media group online, then just basically always play it because it's cash positive and will give you three power or three heat. Uh, the three heat can always be useful. It's, it's a fine card. I, I like the concept and I definitely like uh, a a power tech as an event tech that's that, that's a good idea and uh, all power techs all plan make power techs i like because we need more power techs that do actually do something useful let's get to the next one dust fixing bacteria mm, this is a better version a uh, better version better version of nitrate reducing bacteria a much better version maximum of four oceans uh, played has a micro tag costs 7 MC and the action is that you can add a micro to this card or remove two microbes to raise TR one step. Compare this to nitrogen reducing bacteria which costs 11 or 14? I think 11 right? Yeah 11. Um, nitrate reducing bacteria costs four more and it requires three microbes on it uh, for one TR. Of course, um, that card also starts with three microbes on it already, so you can immediately get one TR. But this is still much, much better in the long game. 
So if nitrate reducing bacteria has, has two upsides over dust fixing bacteria. A, you get you immediately get a TR, and B, you can also play it in a late game. So for example, you can play it in the penultimate gen, get one TR off of it, and then in the last gen you play imported nitrogen because you you want to anyways want to play it because you have a one point animal down. Put the three microbes in NRB and get another uh, TR from it. You can't do that with dust fixing bacteria because of the max requirement. But everything else uh, about dust fixing bacteria is better than NRB. It is cheaper and it's much faster uh, in the long run to get TR out of it. Um, but I would need to calculate, and I don't want to do this off the top of my head, but I'll put it on screen. How, my, how much TR you will get um, throughout the game uh, at what stages, because your first TR, if you play this Gen 1, you will get your first TR in Gen 3, right? You put one microbe on this, uh, another one in Gen 2, and then in Gen 3 you remove it. Then you get in 4 you put a microbe on it, in 5, then in 6 you remove. So you get a TR in 3, 6, 9, 12. So you basically, okay, now I did it off the top of my head. <laughs> So you basically, um, with NRB, you get your theoretical fourth TR in Gen 13, I think, because I just reviewed that card in rating base game cards. So with this card, it's more likely to get to four TR, uh, but still highly unlikely because 12 gens is quite long. Um, for three TR, it's, I think, basically the same as NRB. So, um, but it's cheaper. Yeah, I think it's okay balance. I still think this is stronger than NRB, um, but it's not like insanely more strong um, because it doesn't start off with the three microbes on it immediately. I think it's a, it's a cool concept and, and same as with the power tag, we need more good microbe tags. And this one is, I think, okay. Asteroid delivery is an interesting card. Costs 5 MC as an event, and you either get 3 Titanium or um, 2 Asteroids to another card. Uh, Asteroid cards are really rare, but with something like Comet aiming, this can mean 2 Oceans, which is really, really good. Um, other Asteroid cards I wouldn't use this on. Uh, like, there are some other Asteroid cards I wouldn't use this on. But there are a few that this would be impactful with. The thing is, if you are using it for three titanium, which will probably be most of the time, then it's worse than a mineral deposit. Mineral deposit also costs five, also just has an event tag and gives you five steel, which is 10 MC in value, and this is nine MC in value. Um, the thing is, if you made this, um, for titanium, then it would be 12 MC in value and would be too strong. What you could do, there are two ways. I, I think as I think it's fair this card because it is flexible and gives you the option to add two asteroids to another card instead of um, granting you three titanium. So I think it's already quite fairly balanced. But most of the time, like 95% of the time, you won't have an asteroid card to put asteroids on. Uh, and then I just think asteroid delivery is a bit underwhelming. And I could see two ways I would change this card. A, the boring way, you could make this 1MC cheaper because then it's um, the same uh, ratio of cost to uh, cost to benefit because then it costs 7 and grants 9 in total, so 2MC upside. Same as with um, mineral deposit, which costs eight and gives you 10. The other way of doing it is giving it a space tag because that just gives it more combo potential. That means that you could pay with one titanium for it, one titanium and two MC, and you get three titanium back. Um, I like both ways. It still could remain like this, but uh, I think a slight buff would work. Let's get to the next card though. This is Aquifer Survey. Uh, not quite sure if I talked about this in the last episode already. No, I don't think so. But let's talk about it this, uh, this time anyways. Uh, cost 16, uh, has a building tag on it and starts off with two data. So again, a card with data resources. 
And uh, the effect is that when you remove, uh, when you place tiles on Mars, you add one data resource here, or you remove four and place an ocean tile. So basically with every fifth tile, you get an ocean for free. Uh, the thing is, start with two data on it already. So uh, the third tile after playing aquifer surveying will give you uh, an ocean for free. The thing is, oceans are limited. You can only place nine oceans per, per, per game. And let's say you know you want to go for a round game strategy. You have some special tiles. You have some spaced events that will... Oh no, space events wouldn't even work. I wanted to say space events that let you place oceans so you can get plants and place greeneries, but you don't want to place oceans. Okay, some special tiles, maybe some heat prod, some plant prod, you know, you want to go for a ground game. And you play aquifer serving in the first gen. First of all, it's insanely expensive. Uh, 3 plus 16, 19 for this. Wow. Second point about this, what if your opponents are also going for a rush and are placing oceans like crazy? Let's say you keep this on your starting hand and then your opponent plays Great Aquifer as a prelude and then Ice Asteroid and places a greenery. Four oceans are already gone. Aquifer Serving has lost massively in value. The thing is, every fifth tile, that's quite a lot. Uh, you won't place five tiles, I mean, you will place three tiles early on um, if you're going for a gardener, for example, but the next five tiles, that will take a while. And will there be a, enough oceans to get three trigger, triggers out of this? I don't know. Two triggers, I can see. Eight tiles before the oceans run out, yeah. But um, what the, yeah, what's, what were the other? 13 tiles before the oceans run out? That's hefty. I mean, you can also place oceans for this. Um, like they count as tiles that you place on Mars. Um, but then you also um, cut the oceans down and, and, and there are less oceans left for aquifer surveying. But yeah, I think it's an interesting concept, but it's probably too weak and too risky to play early on. Because if your opponents are going for a rush strategy as well, and they're placing a lot of oceans, then you play this card for 16 plus 3, and it just doesn't do enough. enough. Okay, and this is actually the last card of today's video, and it's not made by Star Trek 238. This is the only one made by another creator called Demzu, which we've also covered uh, a few times already. And this is an interesting one, because uh, it reminds me of a card that will be included in Prelude 2. I have forgotten the name, but I'll try to put it on screen here that allows you to, was it one or two events? It allows, basically allows you to remove, uh, put two events that you've already played back onto your hand. And this card allows you to put a green card that you already played back onto your hand. And that's really strong. Uh, it costs five as an earth tag and an event tag. So first of all, it's one card draw, basically, um, because you just get a card on hand, it's card neutral. Second, Earth Tech and Event Tech, that's a lot of combo potential. You could be playing Terracta or Point Luna, you could have Earth Office and Media Group. It's a lot of combo potential. And lastly, returning a green card to your hand is much better than a card draw because you know what you will get and you can take cards back to your hand that are insanely strong, maybe ha even have gained in value in the meantime. Something like Medical Lab, for example. Uh, maybe you played it to get Builder as an 8th tag. But since then, with 8 building tags, it's likely that you have Steel Prod, maybe some card draw. Maybe since then, you have gotten a, more, a few more building tags down. And then Medical Lab will be insanely good. And you will get that MC Prod again. Mm. Does it work? There are some cards it doesn't work with. Um, for example, uh, Mohol. I thought about Mohol. Um, yeah, you can return it back to your hand and play it. Get the four heat prod again, but a special tile won't be uh, removed. So you can't place the special tile again. 
I think. And other card that would work well with this, something like Miranda Resort with the Earth Tags could be really good. Um, and then just good development cards. If you get this down early, if like if you play a really good development card early and then this to follow up, crazy value. Or like city cards, this also works with because it's not a special tile that it's only in the game once. City can be just a generic city from the from the um, storage. You can just place another city. So maybe uh, you played Dome Crater early on. You could play that again. So uh, in the right moment, right? Dome Crater is a card that in the right moment will give you five plants and then let you convert. That's really, really useful. And there, uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't have any more examples of cards that would be really good, but I, I'm sure there are a lot. If you can think of some, uh, then let me know in the comments. But I think this is a really interesting concept. Once I saw uh, that one card in the Preto 2 preview that lets you do this with a Vent Tech, uh, I thought, oh, well, that could break the game in some cases. But this one is also really good. So definitely interesting. Um, oh my god, um, terraforming Ganymede. Uh, think about that. Maybe you play Terraforming Ganymede to get um, Terraformer, like for four or five TR, and then you're going down that whole Jovian route and you play this in the last gen, take Terraforming Ganymede back to your hand and play it again for like six, seven, eight TR, something like that. That would be crazy. Um, but yeah, interesting concept. I don't know if this would break the game in some cases, but yeah, really, really cool. So yeah. I, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and found these cards as interesting as I did. And definitely let me know in the comments what you think about them. And head, please head to the description and check out the Reddit posts. Leave them an upvote. And these creators have all also done some other amazing cards. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please consider liking this video and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.